الله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا تجد له وليا مرشدا وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله الواحد الأحد الفرد الصمد الذي لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد وأشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا محمد عبده ورسوله بلغ الرسالة وأدى الأمانة ونصح للأمة وتركنا على المحجة البيضاء ليلها كنهارها لا يزيغ عنها إلا هارك صلوات الله وسلامه عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه والتابعين لهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد أيها المسلمون أوصيكم ونفسي بتقوى الله تعالى وطاعته كما قال في كتابه الكريم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون وقال الرسول صلى الله عليه وسلم اتق الله حيثما كنت وأتبع سيئة الحسنة تمحها وخالق الناس بخلق حسن ثم أما بعد Brothers and sisters in Islam No one is immune to mistakes No one is immune to sins only prophets and messengers are infallible. All human beings are prone to committing sins and mistakes. And the best person who commits sins, who, who makes mistakes, is a person who immediately after realizing that what he did was a sin or what he did was a faux part, he would repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sincerely to seek, to seek forgiveness. So in as much as we seek forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in as much as we repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we should apologize to the people that we wrong. We should apologize to the people that we offend. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, among the conditions that he has set for you to be forgiven is to apologize to the person that you offended, to apologize to the person that you wronged. If you don't do that, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not forgive you. Most of the time, <coughs> most of the time, when people commit mistakes, when people commit sins, they are quick to repent to Allah. But when they offend others, they neglect apologizing to the people. They neglect making amends. They neglect reconciling. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not forgive you if you offended someone until you reconcile and make amends with that person. So brothers and sisters in Islam, most of the time we look down upon people. For example, someone is newly employed in a company and a file is missing. So the prime suspect would be this person because he's new. They trust one another, they've been working with one another for a long time, so they would say, nothing like this happened. It's only this person who is newly appointed that misplaced the fire. So when they do, when they conduct a due investigation and find out that the culprit isn't this new employee, they don't apologize. Or if someone works as a maid in one's house and items of the house keep missing, the prime suspect is the maid because she does not belong to the family. So after conducting an investigation, they conclude that the maid isn't the culprit. They don't apologize simply because she's the maid. They take it for granted. We pay her. She has nothing to say. So they keep quiet. They hush the matter. Or if, for example, a scholar gave a lecture and he was quoted out of context or someone did not know what he was talking about. So according to that person's perspective, the scholar made a mistake and he would start spreading rumors about the scholar. But when he comes to realize that the scholar didn't make any mistake, he will not apologize. So it's very, very important to apologize and to clear the air, brothers and sisters in Islam. al Fayruz Abadi says, there are three ways of apologizing. Either to say, I didn't do it, or I didn't say it, or you could say, I did it, or I said it for this and that reason, and I will never do it again, or to say, I admit committing a mistake. I admit committing a sin, and I will never repeat it again. So by doing that to the person that you offended, this person will forgive you. And clearing the air is so important in Islam. For example, one day Prophet Muhammad وسلم, was performing in Tikaf. So his wife Sophia came to visit him. And after they discussed a lot of issues about the house and some other issues related to both of them, 
she decided to go it was time to leave so the prophet peace be upon him decided to walk her out so while they were walking two people saw them and the moment those two people saw prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam with safiya they increased their pace so prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam knew that these people would spread rumors about him so he told them ala rislikuma slow down so he called them back he summoned them to him he told them this is Sophia, my wife, and I am the messenger of Allah. So the Prophet ﷺ knew that Medina was a breeding ground for hypocrites. So some of them did not like to see Islam thrive. Some of them hated to see Prophet Muhammad ﷺ enjoy a good reputation. So they would use every opportunity to discredit Prophet Muhammad ﷺ. He was very aware of this. So he wanted to clear the air and it stopped over there because they came to understand that she was the wife of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Otherwise, they would keep on spreading rumors. He claims to be a messenger. He goes around with women and as you know, hypocrites, what they used to do and we still have hypocrites today. So clearing the air is very important. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when talking about the horrors and the terror of the day of judgment, in Surah Ghafir, he says, يَوْمَ لَا يَنْفَعُ الظَّالِمِينَ مَعَذِرَتُهُمْ وَلَهُمْ لَعْنَ وَلَهُمْ سُوءُ الدَّارِ On that day, the day of judgment, the hypocrites, the wrongdoers, the oppressors, the offenders, they will not benefit from their excuses on that day. They will not benefit from their apologies on that day. So someone who was an, a, a despot, someone who was an, a, an oppressor, someone who did not treat people justly, on that day when he sees the terror in front of him, he will seek to apologize. It will be too late. His apology will avail of him nothing on that day. And for him will be the curse of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the evil abode, the abode of the hellfire. So if you are still alive and before you die, make sure you make amends. Make sure you apologize to the people whom you wrong. Don't look down upon a human being. Our standards are different from the standards of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Someone that you think you are better than in this world, in front of Allah, he is far far better than you so every human being should be treated with respect if you offend anyone no matter whether this person is poorer than you is less advantaged than you you have to apologize one day Bilal Suhail and Salman al Farisi were sitting together in a company of other companions of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. All of them, Bilal, Suhail, and Salman, all of them were freed slaves. And during that time, slaves did not have any say. They don't. Ha they didn't have any respect. Abu Sufyan and some other rich people of Mecca, before he became Muslim, they would always tease these poor people. They will. All they would always taunt them. They would tell them, for example, that you see, you are Muslims. You are poorer than us even if we are not muslims we are richer than you and even if we die our position will be better than you in front of allah so allah does not love you this is why you are slaves and you are poor and you they would continuously taunt them so on this particular occasion abu sufyan before he became a muslim he went and met he encountered Salman, Bilal, and Suhail. And again, he started taunting them. They were so, so angry. And in their presence was Abu Bakr, anhu. So they were angry that they said, Wallahi ma akhadat suyufu Allahi min unuqi adu illahi ma akhadaha. Meaning that I swear by Allah, or we swear by Allah, the swords of Allah did not do their job in taking the neck of the enemy of Allah. In other words, you should have been killed in the wars that happened between Muslims and non-Muslims. So they were telling Abu Sufyan this, and these were the free slaves. So Abu Bakr was offended because Abu Sufyan was among the noble people of Quraysh, was among the chiefs of Quraysh. So Abu Bakr reprimanded them. He said, how dare you say this to a chief of Quraysh and their master? They kept quiet. So Abu Bakr anhu went to complain to Prophet Muhammad وسلم, about this frank negative statement that this, those freed slaves told Abu Sufyan. So what was the response of Prophet Muhammad Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told Abu Bakr لَقَدْ أَغْضَبْتَهُمْ لَإِنْ كُنْتَ أَغْضَبْتَهُمْ لَقَدْ أَغْضَبْتَ رَبَّكَ Perhaps you've annoyed them. 
And if you've annoyed them, be aware that you've annoyed your Lord, Rabb. Actually, when translating the word Rabb in English, we always say Lord, but it's more than that. Rabb means your creator, your cherisher, your provider, your, prote your protector, your caretaker, and the one who will take care of your, of your affairs on the day of, your, of judgment. Also a discipliner, someone who gives you discipline. So Prophet Muhammad وسلم, used this attribute when he was castigating Abu Bakr. So Abu Bakr, one of the noble people of Quraysh. And actually Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu anhu, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam talked about him in a hadith. He said in a hadith that was narrated by Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu, قال, قال Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam لتجدن الناس معادل خيارهم في الجاهلية خيارهم في الإسلام إذا فقهوا ولتجدن أشد خيار الناس في هذا الشأن أشدهم له كراهية. So Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says you will find people like minerals some of them are more precious than others and you will find that the best people the excellent people in Jahiliya during the pre-islamic era who were best during that time when they become muslims and they learn about islam they become the best they become the best muslims abu bakr anhu, in Jahiliya before islam he was famous he was a noble person he was a sincere businessman and he had knowledge of genealogy so many Arabs would go to Abu Bakr to tell them about their ancestors and it was a big issue as it is it is still a big issue today for the Arabs to know their ancestors if you visit an Arab in his house he would you would find a tree of his a family tree about 200 ancestors 300 ancestors so they used to enjoy this knowledge they used to benefit from this from Abu Bakr regarding this knowledge not only that Abu Bakr was a hospitable person so it's an example to those who say that you cannot be a successful businessman without lying. You cannot be a successful businessman without cheating. Abu Bakr even in Jahiliya never lied. He never cheated. And this is why when the message of Prophet Muhammad وسلم, came to him, he did not question the veracity of the message. Instantaneously he believed because he was pure. He had nothing to lose. He was a, piece of, a person of high moral stand. So Abu Bakr anhu, the companion of the, the companion of the Prophet وسلم, a bona fide friend of Prophet Muhammad وسلم, the Prophet did not side with him. He rather sided with those free slaves. So what did Abu Bakr do? He went back to them, Bilal, Salman al Farisi, and Suhail, and he inquired them. He said, Have I annoyed you? Did I annoy you? They said, La, ma aghtabtana ya akhi. Each one of them said, No, you did not annoy us, oh my brother. See the way they answered. Now, according to psychology, if someone deems himself to be weaker than you, if someone deems himself to be less advantaged than you, if you wrong him, he would like to show his power. If you wrong someone who deems himself lesser than you or weaker than you, and if he has the opportunity to revenge, he will use this opportunity to the maximum because he has inferiority complex. So to make up for this inferiority complex, when he has the chance, he will use his power to show you that he is equally powerful. Now, those people who were seemingly in the society poor, but in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they were not poor. In front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they were not weak. So they were full of iman, they were full of faith, and this faith gave them confidence. They did not feel any inferiority complex. So they told Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, no, you did not annoy us. Each one of them said, my brother. So Abu Bakr addressed them as, as his brothers, they also addressed Abu Bakr as their brother. Some people nowadays, in so many societies, if he's from a noble family, if he's rich, and a poor person addresses him as his brother, he feels offended. How come this poor person from a poor family, how can I be his brother? Even though this person is a Muslim, but Abu Bakr was teaching us a lesson. So we learn from this that Prophet Muhammad وسلم, sided with the believers. He did not side with Abu Sufyan. To the Prophet وسلم, position and class doesn't make any difference. Inna akramakum atqakum. The most honorable among you in front of Allah are the most God-fearing, those who have taqwa more than anyone else.
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala praising Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he says Muhammadun Rasulullah wal-lazina ma'ah ashidda'u ala al-kuffar ruhamahu baynahum Muhammad is a messenger of Allah and those with him, those who believe in him they are severe when they deal with the non-Muslims they are severe when they deal with it, with the disbelievers but when they deal with one another they are kind and merciful to one another so Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Implementing this ayah, he said it with this, the freed slaves. Although they were poor, but according to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, they were of high standard. They were good. They were of high value. So this is a lesson to us. Don't look down upon any human being. If you offend someone, whether he's rich or poor, you have to apologize. Some people have the tendency, if they offend a rich person, they are quick to apologize. But if they offend a poor person, they neglect him. What is he going to do? I have wasta he doesn't have. I have connection he doesn't have. In front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this person whom you look down is very valuable. So if you want, if you want to gain salvation, if you want to be forgiven, you have to apologize to the people whom you wronged. And if a person comes to apologize to you, you have to be quick to forgive. Anas bin Malik radiallahu anhu qala, qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Atta'anni min Allah, wal ajalatu min ash-shaytan, wa ma ahadun aksara ma'azir min Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, wa ma min shay'in ahabbu ila Allah ta'ala min al-hamd. Anas narrated that Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, if you have the quality of doing due investigation and feasibility study and careful consideration of something that you will do before you do it, if you want to take a decision and you carefully study this decision, you take your time, this is among the qualities that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala likes. So don't be hasty, don't be impulsive. If you want to take decisions, proper decisions, after praying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, after supplicating to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, make a due study of the situation. Then after that, take decisions. But don't be hasty. So the hadith continues. And being hasty in deciding matters, especially if these matters are sensitive, this is among the vices that the devil will always propagate. So someone comes to you and tells you, you know, your employee is spreading rumors about you, you take a hasty decision for which you will regret afterwards. So this is among the vices that the devil is always spreading amongst people. So you have to take due consideration of the situation. You have to study the situation from different aspects before you take any decision. And this is among the virtues that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala likes. So the hadith continues وَمَا أَحَدٌ أَكْثَرَ مَعَاذِيرٌ مِنَ اللَّهِ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى There is no one who will accept apologies as many times as you do, as many times as you apologize from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you commit a sin, you apologize. Allah will forgive you. You commit a sin, you repent. So if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is quick to forgive, and if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will accept your apologies and excuses, what about human beings? Are you better than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Are you better than Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Why should you be selfish? When you commit a sin, you want to be forgiven. And someone, when someone comes to reconcile with you, you don't forgive. So this is dangerous brothers and sisters in Islam. In as much as you want to be forgiven, you have to be able to forgive others. In as much as you want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to pardon you, you have to accept someone's apology who had offended you. Brothers and sisters in Islam, Abu Darda narrates to us a situation that happened between Abu Bakr and Umar ibn al-Khattab. So both of them were discussing some issues together, Abu Bakr and Umar. In the process, Abu Bakr said something that annoyed Umar. So Umar responded by leaving the scene. He decided to go to his house. So Abu Bakr realized that he did a mistake to annoy Umar. So Abu Bakr followed Umar in vain, asking Umar to forgive him. So Abu Bakr was pleading with Umar to forgive him, but because Umar was so angry, he wouldn't forgive Abu Bakr. So until Umar reached his house and Abu Bakr was following him. So Umar entered his house and slammed the door against Abu Bakr. 
So what to do? Abu Bakr is trying his best to apologize to Omar, and Omar is so angry to forgive. So Abu Bakr decided to go to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam to complain about the situation. So after praising the Prophet about the situation, and actually Abu Darda was following them because Abu Darda wanted to carry to, to to take the knowledge from the prophet and from his companions to us so if these companions of the prophet were not curious to learn the consequences of any situation we wouldn't have gotten that knowledge so this is one of the commendable attributes of the companions of prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam they were eager to learn so that they should implement the lessons and they should keep the legacy to the posterity the ones who would come after who would be muslims to learn from such situations so abu darda narrates that while they were seated abu bakr has already apprised the prophet about the situation so umar in his house he felt remorse he decided to come and give up and accept the apology of abu bakr but it was too late so Umar arrived in the presence of the Prophet Abu Bakr and some other companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So Umar explained to the Prophet what happened, what was the reaction of the Prophet. The Prophet before Umar had arrived said, Amma sahibukum hadha faqad ghamar. In other words, Umar, for not forgiving Abu Bakr, he was taking a risk. So if you don't forgive your friend, if you don't forgive your Muslim brother, after apologizing to you sincerely, you are taking a risk. Because as a human being, you have to forgive. In as much as you want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive you, you have to forgive. So Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that Umar had taken a risk. So when Umar came after Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and listened to both of them, he was so angry. He said, so he, he said, are you not going to leave my companion? Are you not going to leave alone my companion and my bona fide friend alluding to Abu Bakr? Why? He said, Inni qult, inni rasulullahi ilaykum jami'a faqultum kathabt wa qala Abu Bakr sadaqt. So when Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam began to proclaim his message to the politics of Mecca that he is a messenger of Allah, majority of them at the beginning, although afterwards they became Muslims, but at the beginning they said, you are a liar. They branded the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam as a liar. Only Abu Bakr from the onset, he believed in the message of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And in, on all occasions, whenever the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam said something, Abu Bakr would say, you've already told the truth. Even when the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam went on a journey at night, al-Isra wa al-Mi'raj from Mecca to Jerusalem, then he ascended to, the, uh, to a place above the seventh heaven during al when he came back narrating what happened to the people of Mecca, majority of them belied him, except Abu Bakr. Abu Bakr said, I believe in him in more than that. I believe him when he comes to us with message from Allah, with revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if he tells us that he was ascended to a place above the seventh heaven, I also believe. So this is when he gained the title as Siddiq. So Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, because Abu Bakr was a righteous person, because because Abu Bakr was a sincere person and because Abu Bakr admitted in front of the Prophet that you know I'm the one who did wrong when the Prophet peace be upon him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was castigating Umar Abu Bakr continuously would tell him Wallahi ana lakuntu Allah I'm the one who caused it I'm the one who mistreated him unjustly so it so happens today for example if you're working together and someone commits a, mi a mistake at workplace they are not able to detect it he would keep quiet and they would frame another person. Another person would be a suspect. So the culprit keeps quiet because he knows the consequences would be dire. But Abu Bakr of the law did not do this. He admitted to doing mistake and this should be a Muslim. If you, you are really a Muslim, you have to accept your mistakes. Don't incriminate other people. Don't let other people suffer because of your mistakes. Don't, people, uh, don't let other people suffer because of your misdeeds. Because otherwise, 
you will get double uh, double sin and you will be punished uh, severely. So brothers and sisters in Islam, the issue of seeking apology is very, very important in Islam. We have to seek apology even to those whom we feel we are better than and we shouldn't feel we are better than anyone. Only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can tell who is better than who. We are all in front of Allah the same. Only those who excel in good deeds are better than others. And you cannot tell who is excelling in good deeds except Allah. How many people ostensibly would act as believers but in their private life they are full of shirk. They are full of sins. They are full of al uh, altruistic, uh, of ulterior motives. So only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can tell who believes and who doesn't. This is why Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the companions, whenever they performed an act of worship, they would be concerned whether Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will accept it of them or not. So this should be a Muslim. When you do a good deed, you should pray to Allah to accept it of you, not to brag about it. I'm a righteous person. I'm better than this. I'm better than him, better than her. Only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can tell who is better than who. And always when you offend someone, you have to apologize. Whether this person is young or even your own children, if you do something wrong to them, if you misinterpret their words, if you punish them for the crimes they didn't commit, you have to apologize to them, even though they are your children. This is how Islam teaches us. So brothers and sisters in Islam, there was, there was a man by the name Al-Hasan ibn Sahal. He was one of the ministers, cabinet ministers of Al-Ma'mun. Al-Ma'mun was one of the rulers of the Abbasid dynasty, Ad-Dawla al-Abbasir, which moved its headquarters from Damascus and they settled in, in Baghdad. Anyway, Al-Ma'mun was a very strong ruler during that time and in, in his cabinet, uh, in, in, uh, among his cabinet ministers, there was a man called Al-Hasan ibn Sahal. Al-Hasan ibn Sahal was, uh, was dearly respected by Al-Ma'mun. He was trusted by Al-Ma'mun. He had a high position in the heart of Al-Ma'mun. So one day a man had committed a mistake and he wanted to apologize to Al-Hasan because Al-Hasan had power during that time. So the man came to him apologizing for the sin that he committed. So what did Al-Hasan say? He said, تَقَدَّمَتْ لَكَ طَاعَةً وَحَدَثَتْ لَكَ تَوْبَةً وَكَانَتْ بَيْنَهُمَا نَبْوَةً وَلَمْ تَغْلِبَ سَيِّئَةٌ حَسَنَتَيْنِ So it means at the beginning you were doing acts of obedience, you were doing good deeds, then after that you committed a sin or a mistake, then after the mistake you repented. So repentance is also an act of worship. In other words, between two acts of worship there was a sin. So one sin cannot overpower one sin cannot be heavier than two acts of worship. So this person was forgiven. So this is a lesson to us that when we deal with people, we should concentrate on the positive side of the person. In some places, some companies, someone will be working so hard, devoting his time, his efforts for the company, for the welfare of the people working over there. But if he happens to do only one mistake, hell will break loose on him. They will capitalize on that mistake to discredit this person, ignoring the good, sin, the good things that he has been doing. And actually, as Muslims, we have to concentrate on the positive side. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, إِذَا قَالَ الرَّجُلُ هَلَكَ النَّاسِ فَهُوَ أَهْلَكُمْ When a person complains, saying that, you know, people are eternally damned, people are wicked, he doesn't see good in people, always he will complain about people, he will talk negatively about people. Prophet Muhammad says, this is the worst of them. Why scholars have said, المؤمن يطلب المعاذير لسلامة باطنه والمنافق يطلب العيوب لخبث باطنه. So they say a believer 
full of faith will always look at the positive side of the people. He will always find excuses for the mistakes of the people. Why? Because he trusts himself. In himself, his intrinsic nature is pure and clean. Whereas a hypocrite will always concentrate on the negative side of people. So he will always vilify people. He will tarnish the reputation of people. Why? Because inside of himself, he's a wicked person. And psychologically, they say, if someone is a liar, we'll assume that everyone is a liar. If someone is a cheater, will assume that everyone is a cheater. So if you work with a person who does not doubt you in any way, if you track down his record, you will find he's doing weird things more than the people that he accused. And Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said this before psychologists done their research to discover the, uh, the attitudes of people. So brothers and sisters in Islam, be quick to apologize especially that Ramadan is coming. So you enter in Ramadan when you repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala after apologizing. And if anyone comes to you to apologize, accept the apology. Barakallahu li wa lakum fil Qur'an al-Azul wa nafa'ni wa iyaakum lil ayat wa takil hakim. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen wa salatu wa salam ala ashraf al-musalim Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa ta'ma'in wa ashadan la ilaha illallah wa ahdahu la sharika la wa ashadan Sayyidina Muhammad an ahdahu wa rasuluh Ayyuhal muslim nur usuikum wa nafsi bi taqwa Allah ta'ala wa sallu wa sallimu ala man umirtum bi salatu wa salam alayhi wa muman bi qawlihi ta'ala inna Allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala al-nabi ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ala Muhammad kama sallayta ala Ibrahim wa ala ala Ibrahim wa barik ala Muhammad wa ala ala Muhammad kama barakta ala Ibrahim wa ala ala Ibrahim inna ka hamid al-majid Brothers and sisters in Islam talking about people who deem themselves to be disadvantaged, to be weak they are sensitive people and actually in the hadith of the Prophet how what he told Abu Bakr regarding uh, Bilal, Suhail and uh, Salman this is a lesson to us when you deal with a person who deems himself to be weak or to be less advantaged you have to be careful of what you say to him you have to choose your statements carefully I have an acquaintance someone whom I know he complained to me that he, in, he is in charge of transportation in his company so one day he found two drivers talking about Islam to one another so sincerely he was happy because these drivers most of the time they would, they would be talking about issues other issues rather other than Islam so he went to them and he uh, he praised them, he commanded them, he said, you know, I'm so happy that you can have some time to talk about Islam. He was sincere about this comment. He was implementing one of the, um, one, one of the instructions by, by a scholar by the name Gary of love languages. How you can express your love to the person you're dealing with and one of them is words of affirmation. When they do something good, you encourage them. You comment on it. You praise them. You commend them for that. So he was sincerely commending them for what they were doing. But what was the response? The response was, you think you're the only one who can talk about Islam? Some people when they read only one book, two books about Islam, they feel they are scholars. We can know more than you. So he did not say it in a bad way. His attitude was good. He wanted to commend them. But they misinterpreted the statement. So this is to show that you have to be careful when dealing with people who do not, who do not have self-confidence and who have inferiority complex. A believer wouldn't have this problem. But there are some people, although they are Muslims, they suffer from inferiority inferiority complex so you have to be careful of what you say and how you deal with such people otherwise they will be offended and we have to make sure you deal with them in the proper way don't underestimate them Inna Allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala al-nabi Ya ayuhal ladhina amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslim Allahumma salli ala sayyidina Muhammad wa ala ala Muhammad Kama salli ala Ibrahim wa ala ala Ibrahim Inna ka hamidu al-majid Wa anta Allahumma anil arbaati al-khulafai rashidin Abi Bakr wa Umar wa Uthman wa Ali Wa an sahir ashabi rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Allahumma a'izal islam al-muslimin Wa adhilla shirk al-mushrikin Wa dammir a'da'a 